Hey there! This is going to be the first video in a short series on saving some money by replacing Minitab with Python. Minitab is incredibly powerful software, but most companies only use a few features that are easily replicated by using Python and Excel. In this video, we'll cover CPK, a common process capability indicator, which is a simple way to start using Python to do statistics. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I'm a CQE, but have yet to run into an employer who's concerned with the differences between CP, CPK, PP, and PPK. So we're just going to wrap everything up into one simple statistical capability value, but have centering. I've seen that this, this is generally the most useful gauge for a process anyway, so we'll just get to it. I'm going to open up a text editor, um, and the first thing that we need to do is import NumPy. And this is going to do two things for us. Uh, while we're testing this out, we're going to want to have some random values. So let's just say that vals is going to equal numpy random. And we'll do these normally distributed. And let's just go, let's say, like around 5 with the standard deviation of 3. And we want 30 points. And all this is going to do is generate some values that we could, you know, we'll say that are like our measurements from whatever our process is. So what we'll want to do next is make a function. And we can just call this something like CPK. We're going to have a couple inputs into this. Uh, so first parameter, we're going to want to have those values, which we'll put in as a list. And then we'll have a lower limit and an upper limit. So the other thing that NumPy is going to do is make it very easy for us to calculate mean, which will just be NumPy mean. And we'll say vals. And we'll get that standard deviation too. So now that we have mean and standard deviation, we've got everything that we need to calculate CPK. So we're going to do this in multiple parts. We're going to grab our CPL, or our lower, and this is just going to equal mean minus lower, and we'll divide that by 3 times the standard deviation. Likewise, CPU for the upper will just be upper minus mean divided by 3 times the standard deviation. And when we take centering into account, our CPK is just going to equal the minimum between our CPL and CPU. So this is good. We've calculated everything. Now let's print it out. And we'll just say something like our mean is going to equal something, our standard deviation, and you know what? We're printing it, so let's make it look nice. So that, and we'll use string formatting. Just like that. And let's print out our CPL. Sometimes it's nice to know the difference if one of your limits is more important than the other, especially. And we'll do the same thing here. Whoops. And finally, the one that everybody's concerned with, our CPK. And we'll do that. So let's go ahead and try to run this. We'll say CPK. We'll put the vowels that we created up here. And let's see. Okay, so we have a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 3. So let's say that our lower limit is 3 and our upper limit is 8 or something ridiculous like that. Now we just have to open up a terminal, and let's go ahead and try to run that. Now, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> I've typed that so many times, I don't know how I screwed it up this time. And I also can't spell normal. And I don't think I spelled it right there either. There we go. Okay, so this is pretty good here. We got our mean printed out, our standard deviation, our CPL, our CPU, and our CPK. So that looks pretty good for now, uh, except we're going to make one more change here. Uh, sometimes you have one limit, and you don't have another limit. So let's say that you know a certain process measurement can never go below a certain thing, or it can never go above a certain thing. Rather than try to create an extra value here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to set upper equal to none, uh, just like this. So the default here, if we don't put anything in place there, is that 
upper will just not be there. It'll be a null value. So we just have to make a couple changes. It's not going to change our mean or our standard deviation, but we're going to say if upper, we'll do everything that we just did there. And that makes sense because if there's a value for this, then we have everything that we need. Otherwise, though, we're going to do something else. And instead of taking any of these, I'm just going to, because we're just going to have one value, it'll be our CPK. And we're just going to take the absolute value of our mean and we'll subtract lower from that, divide it by three times our standard deviation, just like that. So whether this is a higher value or a lower value, we'll get the absolute value of it and do our CPK calculation. So that works, and we'll want to print that out. So we'll just copy and paste this, because most of it's the same. Except we won't have a CPL or a CPU. And let's test this out and see if it works. So let's get rid of this upper value, and we'll try to run this again using just the values that we create, which will be different this time, and a lower or upper, it doesn't matter, a limit of three. And there we go. We have a mean of 4.6, standard deviation there, and our CPK, which in this case, this is above what our limit was, because uh, I think our limit was 3. Um, we're pretty close to it based on that standard deviation, so we have a pretty low CPK here. So, looks like it worked. Uh, you'll look, I mean, this is really simple, really straightforward, um, not, doesn't really do anything too good. I mean, we could knock this out in Excel probably in two seconds just using some formulas. Uh, but we're going to try to build up our little quality tools folder here by making everything as small as possible so that we can reuse as much code as possible. Some of the next steps will obviously be to uh, graph this information so that we can you know, see how we're doing. You know, Control charts are very big, and we'll want to change our inputs. Right now, we're type if we didn't have this values here, we'd be typing this stuff into the uh, command line, which is... No fun. Uh, we want to be able to put things into an Excel workbook. Maybe we, our information already comes to us in, a, in, a, in an Excel workbook. So uh, we want to make it more user friendly. But this is just a quick way to, you know, do part of Minitab. And actually, uh, a company I worked for had a license for Minitab, you know, paying a couple thousand dollars a year for it, and literally only used it for CPK and gauge R and R. So this right here basically covers half of that license cost for that employer, uh, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, Gage r is a little more involved, but we're going to tackle that too. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.